How would you say your your daughter is responding now? How is she doing? As far as right now, she's she's doing well. I mean, it, it took a little bit. We when, went to therapy a couple of times, and the therapist said that the more memories we make and the more love we give her, which we are a very loving family, um, that she could get past this, but subconsciously she might not like certain things about certain times of the year. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I will say children are very resilient. And um, if she wants to talk about it um, or if she has reactions to things, the more you can get her to mm -hmm. verbalize about it and talk about it, it can be cathartic. She, she talks about it a couple times a week, and we yeah. always let her tell us what she needs to tell us, and we always yeah. reassure her. Yeah. And... And you know, it's it's okay to let her know it. You know it, it it's not a real thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's a mask, and that you don't trivialize it in her mind that mm -hmm. you know you're silly for acting no. this way or being upset. But do put it in a context, and uh, she'll wrap her head around it eventually. And it's just that she shouldn't have to do all that. Mm, you're That's right. the thing. She can do it, but she shouldn't have to do it. You're right. Those are coping energies and skills that shouldn't be absorbed by something like this. They should be absorbed by something else. Mm -hmm. right? And she shouldn't have to do all of that in this. Um, and how's your son doing? So, I mean, he's still uh, not now almost four year old and he's four next month, but he's still in therapy. We started sending him to trauma therapy early August of last year. Um, it was a little bit worse then, but still another day goes by that he doesn't slap himself in the face over us just saying like, hey buddy, you can't do that. And I have to hold his arms down. And it's ridiculous. Like, so yeah, he still you know, has happy moments and is fine, but the second that he's redirected or upset, my kid's slapping himself in the face because of what they did to him. It's awful. He's gotten diagnosed with, I believe they said general uh, traumatic disorder, something similar to that, but he shouldn't have a diagnosis from a daycare. <laughs> not like that. No, certainly not. Yeah, we have to constantly reassure our daughter every morning when we drop, drop her off at daycare that the scary monsters are not there. I can't bring myself to send him back to a daycare. He hasn't been back to a daycare since this. Yeah, yeah. well, I, yeah, that, yeah, that's hard. Uh, I want to welcome uh, Dr. Kenya Wolf and Dr. Kathy Grace, co-directors at the University of Mississippi's Graduate Center for the Study of Early Learning. Um, Dr. Grace, Dr. Wolf, thank you guys for being here. You say, Dr. Grace, that we are currently in a national child care crisis. And one of the main reasons is what I was saying earlier about it's like $8 an hour and that there's just not a real good training protocol at the daycare level. Is that a fair statement? It's a fair statement. Part of what we're seeing now is that the, what used to be acceptable fees or, or I would say salaries, now you can go to a fast food restaurant and you can make maybe three, four dollars an hour more depending on where you live and a hamburger's not gonna talk back to you. Uh, and so we're looking at now a competition for salaries and, and for wages and for individuals that was not there before. Right. And so we've got centers all across the country that are only half operating because they can't find the staff. So they only have to close some of the mostly infant and toddler rooms, the ages of, of their children, uh, because they don't have the staff if they meet the ratios that the state sets. Another problem we have in our country is that every state makes their own regulations and they have their own regulatory boards. Uh, one state in the country doesn't even have any. The training issue is critical, particularly now, because as people come in, they say, well, this really isn't for me, I'm gonna leave, and they've only been there two days. So then they have to have somebody to come in quickly to replace them. So it's literally, in some cases, people who are just walking down the street and see a sign that says, we need help. I would just like to commend these two couples here for uh, being advocates for their children because it takes, particularly if you live in a small place, it takes a lot. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.